This is MathGuide.com, and my name is Mark Karadimos. In this video, we're going to talk about how to simplify radical expressions under multiplication. In our first section, we're going to go over what square root means. In our second section, we're going to go over two problems about the basics, basic level stuff. In our third section, we're going to go over intermediate level problems, and then our, our last section, our fourth section, we're going to go over two difficult level problems. Let's get started. So let's start by talking about some rudimentary ideas of square root. Like for instance, let's say we're trying to do the square root of 16. Well, we know the square root of 16 is 4, and we can prove it. We can prove it by saying 4 squared is 16. Yep, 4 times 4 is 16. And see, that is a proof because squaring and square rooting are opposite functions. And so one does indeed outdo the other, or undo the other. Okay, so that is proof that this does work. Uh, we could try another one. Let's say we do the square root of 49. Well, we know the square root of 49 is 7. And we can prove it. We could say that 7 squared, or 7 times 7, is 49. So that's how it checks out. All right, so that was just a little bit of a warm up into square roots. And let's see how this plays out when we're talking about uh, more complicated expressions under multiplication. All right, I've got two problems listed here. These are basic level problems. And let's take a look at how this works. So anytime you're multiplying two expressions, you multiply the outside material times the outside material. So five times four is 20. And you multiply the inside times the inside. So I'm going to get square root of 6. That's all we could do here. There's nothing more I could do. I can't take the square root of 6. There's no number, at least no integer value that I could take the square root. So that if I square that integer value, I get back 6. So we're kind of stuck with this answer. All right, let's do the same thing here. We're going to multiply 3 times 4 and get 12. And then we're going to multiply 7 times 7 and get 49. Sometimes people leave it 7 times 7. I'm just going to put 49. Well, here I can take the square root of 49. Square root of 49 is 7. Okay, so that is a 7. Now, we were multiplying this. This is 12 times the square root of 49 because this is all multiplication. This is all multiplication. Everything's being multiplied together. So this is still multiplication. So now what we're going to do is multiply and get 84. So sometimes when we multiply radical expressions, we can get a non-radical answer. These two radicals, in a, in a way, were able to clean themselves up, so to speak. All right, let's take a look at some intermediate level problems. So let's say we multiply these together. So I'm going to multiply 7 times 3. And I'm going to leave it this time, just like 7 times 3, so we can see what we're multiplying. Same thing here. I'm going to multiply 2 times 6, so all that inside stuff remains the same. Well, I'm going to break up the 6. Really, 6 can be thought of as 2 times 3. Okay, you haven't done anything with these outside values at all. Okay, so what can I do with this? Well, it turns out that I can do something with this. If you look at those two values right there, I got 2 times 2. Well, we know that 2 times 2 is really 4. So I could take the square root of 4. So what's the square root of 4? Well, the square root of 4 is 2. So all of that becomes 2. So it goes outside with these numbers. And I still have this 3 that I can't do anything with. So all I did is take the square root of 4, it's 2. Well, now what I want to do is multiply all this stuff together. So 3 times 7 is 21. 21 times 2 is 42. Radical 3. And there you go. There's my answer there. Let's do the same thing here. So outside numbers times outside. So 8 times x, x times 8, whichever. And I'm going to multiply all my inside material. So I've got 2 y, y cubed. All right, but really, what is y cubed? y cubed is really 
y, 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 three y's. So what I want to do is then take the square root of those parts. Now, just like I did before, when I took the square root of four, it was two. I'm really doing the same thing here. But let me explain in more detail why this works. Because I'm taking the square root of y squared. So picture that, the square root of y squared. And you could see that the square root and the square are going to cancel each other. And what you're left with when you take the square root of a square is just plain old whatever's inside, or in this case, y. So this becomes just a y. And we could see that this is going to become a y. What's left underneath the square root? This 2. And I still have this 8 in the x on the outside. OK, so what's the final answer? 8x. And we've got y times y, which is y squared. And I have the radical 2 still inside there. OK. Those are intermediate level problems. All right, have some more complicated looking problems here. I'm going to continue my strategy from before. Let's multiply 12 times 3. So we're keeping our outside material times our outside. And now we're going to put our inside material together. So I have 10, 8, c cubed. That is a time sign, not a decimal. That's 10 times 8. c cubed, c to the fourth. So let's break all this stuff up. So really, what is going on there with the 8 and the 10? Well, we know that the 8 really stands for 2 times 2 times 2. And the 10 is 2 times 5. So what are all these c's? Well, there's 7 c's. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. All that's underneath the radical. So how do we deal with this? Well, it looks like we're going to take things in parts. We're going to take the square root of 4. We're going to take the square root of another 4. And we're going to pair all this up, too. We're taking the square root of all those squares. Now, this is kind of a very rudimentary way to attack this, but it should make sense. So 12 times 3 is eventually going to be multiplied together. But alongside the 12 and the 3, we're going to have a 2 come out, right? Because the square root of 4 is 2. We got another square root of 4, which is 2. We got the square root of c squared. The square root of c squared is c. Another c. And another c. So what's left underneath the square root? 5c. So what's all this on the outside? So 12 times 3 is 36. 36 times 2 is 72. 72 times 2 is 144. C times C times C, that's C cubed. And what's left on the inside is just a 5C. And we're done. Moving on to our next example and our last example. So what do we have here? I have a negative times a positive, so I know that's going to be negative 14 U times U. Uh, okay, but now what's left on the inside? Well, I've got 9u, and I've got 3u to the fifth. Okay, so what do we want to do? We want to write this. I need a little more room, so I'm going to move further to the left. So uh, I will be multiplying this all out eventually. But what's all this stuff underneath the radical? Well, all that under the radical is, let's see, a 3 here, and then a 9 is a 3 times 3. And let's say I got 5 u's plus one more, that makes 6 u's. Okay, so all of this is underneath the radical. Okay, so now let's play cleanup. So how do we do this? Well, with square root, yep, I know you don't see it, but with these square roots, Square root means 2, right? Square means 2. So we group things in 2's. Well, here you'll notice that we have a cube root, right? Cube roots means that we're going to group things in 3's. So we're going to group them up in, in groups of 3's. OK, 
Okay, why does this work? Picture this. We're going to take the cube root of 3 cubed. See how these three powers are going to switch? Well, you know, that's a bad example. i got threes everywhere. Try the letters. If I do the u cubed. So you can see the cube root is going to cancel the cube, and you're left with u. So anytime you've got a grouping, one of those from the group is going to come on the outside. All right, so what's on the outside? I've got a negative 14 u, u cubed. I got a 3 that goes on the outside. I've got a u that comes on the outside. And I've got another u. And that looks like there's nothing left underneath the cube root sign. So I don't need to write to the cube root sign. All of this is on the outside. So when I multiply 3 times 14, 3 times negative 14, I'm going to get negative 42. How many u's do I have? Let's see, u, u, u cubed times u. That's 6 u's all being multiplied together. And there's the final answer. Okay, make sure you go back to mathguide.com, check out our text lessons, interactive quizzes, and of course our instructional videos. Take care.